Hey folks, David Hubble here, and it's Saturday, November 14th. And we've had another wonderful week of Melitol weather here in Mobile, Alabama. Have you ever wondered what it looks like if you leave a Melitol on the vine too long? Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you, so stay tuned. It's the 11th week of the 2020 fall Melanchthon season. If you're interested to find out the progress on my 10-year-old Boudreaux Robert vine, do me a favor and click the red subscribe button below and click that bell. That way you'll be alerted to all new videos that I put out on Melanchthon and other things. So folks, here we are, 11th week, and uh, you can see the Melanchthon vine is still going and growing well. It hasn't gained much uh, length. Uh, I think it's put most of its efforts into fruiting at this point. So. Um, Still holding up pretty well. Temperatures have been in the 70s here in Mobile. Uh, thank God we didn't have a hurricane this week. So uh, the vines are pretty much handling things. Have had a little bit of issue with the squirrels, but other than that, it's just been growing. So as you can see now, I've got uh, still plenty of melanchthon coming in. Um, I think last week, count was maybe I'd picked thus far maybe 25 got another two that I've picked so far this week um, I will find out in a little bit how much I picked today uh, so occasionally what will happen is you will leave uh, a melanchthon the vine longer than it really needs to and um, part of that is because as you can tell it's, it's really kind of hard to always get every one of them with all these uh, leaves and vines and that's a good problem um, and what will happen is, uh, or sometimes you may not even know if, the, uh, if it's ready to pick because you're not sure what size your, your fruit's going to be. So uh, I know mine will usually fit in my hand. So what I've ended up doing is uh, leaving some, hoping that it will grow a little bit bigger. Now in this particular case, if you remember watching, let's see if you can see it here. This one's been on for a month. And there you go. You see it starts to get all kind of little uh, cracks in it. Uh, a little aged, a little weathered looking. So this is one that has stayed on. I should have picked it probably a week and a half ago. Now, I don't know if you can see on the bottom. I'll go ahead and pick this now. Yeah. But yeah, you can see how all the wrinkles and stuff on that. I showed you last week how the seeds will start to come out the bottom. This one doesn't have one, but if we'll find a few here and I'll show you they're actually doing that while on the vine too. So hold on. All right, so here's an example of what I was talking about. You can see on this one, let me get a little closer. It's got the little, it's starting to get wrinkled. But then if you look below, you can see that the seed is emerging and it's still on the vine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So as you can see, I've picked this one. Um, it was on the vine and uh, the seed is starting to drop. Now that doesn't mean that you can't eat it. It's still perfectly good to eat. Uh, what I have found though is that when you cut in in between, and I'll do that maybe in the next week's episode, show you what it looks like when you cut one open. Uh, the seed is usually sever uh, covered or surrounded by the flesh of the fruit. Now when this starts to drop, I find that if you let this go too long inside it gets really fibrous right around there. So your yield on your uh, vegetable is not quite as good with the older fruits but this is a perfect one to take and cover up like I did last week and um, let it sprout so we'll see how many more of these I got so this is one I was leaving on uh, because the squirrels had started mangling it as you can see by the uh, grooves there but the seed has dropped out so what I'm going to do is I'll pick this in a bit and uh, try to definitely save it, save it for a, a seed starter. As you can see, we still have plenty of them coming through. There's another one where the bottom's coming out. Pick that now. There we got another one as well. Unfortunately, I've got more of these than I prefer, but I just hadn't been able to get out here this past week with work and all. But anyway, the good news is that the people who've been on my backlog of uh, wanting to get seed melaton hopefully will be in good shape this year. 
I've probably got another handful out there that I've got to go pick. Uh, it's just hard to do that with the camera, but you can see this is what it'll look like if you leave it too long on the vine. Um, so uh, the good news, like I said, is that you want to save some anyway for uh, vining or to share with people. So this is one good way to do it. I uh, don't think it necessarily has to do with the weather causing it to say drop the seed early because uh, we've had mild temperatures. I think really what it does is based on time and so I think what I've seen is that these have probably been about three weeks three to four weeks on the vine uh, probably about two weeks they've been full size and didn't get any bigger. Uh, in my case I was leaving them um, and really probably should have picked them all last weekend at the latest and used them. Uh, but anyway like I said it's not it's not a lost cause, it's just this is what happens if you wait too long. So, just some more information to share. We'll check on the ones inside in a bit. But if this has helped you, uh, please leave a comment in the section below on recognizing what these Melitol look like if you leave them too long. Now I'm going to check on the progress of the ones I'm trying to sprout. If you recall, I put these... I put these in a brown paper bag on a tile floor underneath a dark area underneath an old wine rack. So let's see. So here we have one and you can see we've got a nice sprout already here probably about inch and a half long. So that's after you saw what the progress was last week. I can check this other one here. You see on this one we're starting to get a little bit of a sprout come out. So we're making some great progress on these. More to come. So if the information in this video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you know of anybody who would find this information helpful, please send it to them and share it with them. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking that red button below and clicking that bell. So if you'd like to find out more in-depth information on growing Meliton, check out Dr. Lance Hill's Meliton.org website, M-I-R-L-I-T-O-N dot O-R-G, or my Facebook page, Meliton Man and Mobile. Also, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or send them to me at rpcajun2r at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.